Hello everyone. Last week my air popper broke, which means I got a new air popper. Let's take a look and along the way I'll show you three tips that will make a huge difference in your air popping. So let's talk about air popping. Air popped popcorn, lightly seasoned, is a super healthy snack. It can be low calorie, low fat, tasty, and really satisfying. I eat a lot of popcorn, and the air popper is my tool of choice for making it. Unfortunately, my favorite old air popper finally broke last week after 20 years of faithful service. It was a Presto brand with the Orville Redenbacher logo. Uh, I did some quick math and this machine made easily over 1,000 batches of popcorn, maybe, maybe closer to 2,000 if we count parties and nights with the grandkids. But the power cord shorted right here. I don't know if you can see that, uh, it's that little black spot there. Maybe that's repairable by somebody qualified, I'm not sure. Um, but air poppers are pretty high powered and this one says it's 1440 watts on the bottom so i decided to just play it safe and get a new one and because the old one served me so well i decided to get another presto with the orville redenbacher logo and everything and here it is uh, most air poppers have the same design with a base unit and a cover piece and this little bowl slash scoop on top. You just put in the popcorn, fill it to the little line inside, and put the cover on and plug it in. That's it, two and a half minutes to make a big old batch. That's even faster than my microwave. Comparing this new popper to my old one, the only difference really is this extra bit of molding over here to uh, wrap the power cord around, which is not a really big deal but I do really like this new clear plastic cover. My old cover had gotten kind of uh, uh, cloudy over the years, so it's really nice to be able to see that again. The little bowl on top here is intended as a measuring cup and a butter melter. Uh, okay, first, you don't need it as a measuring cup since there's already a fill line inside the base unit. But more importantly, and here's tip number one, don't ever melt butter in the cup. It's messy to use, messy to clean, and it doesn't work all that well. And pouring butter from a cup isn't the best way to get buttery flavor evenly onto your popcorn. My old machine lasted nearly 20 years because I never put butter in the cup. Just keep all the butter and oil away from your machine and it will never need any cleaning beyond just the occasional dusting or wipe off. My number two tip is literally a tip. When I was searching Amazon for my new machine, I saw this mentioned in several reviews. When using the fluffiest popcorn brands like Orville Redenbacher's, kernels will sometimes go flying during the popping process. The varieties of popcorn that pop the biggest have the highest water content inside the kernels, which causes the bigger explosions and pops. Uh, big puffy popcorn is a great thing, but it can make things a little wild in an air popper. Specifically, the first pops in your batch will push some of the other unpopped kernels out too soon, which they go everywhere, it's a waste, it's a mess. Um, but there's an easy fix. As soon as you hear the first couple of pops, just tilt the base backwards slightly, maybe 45 degrees max. And this part of the machine doesn't even get hot. So this keeps everything inside the popper until the weight of the popped popcorn prevents unpopped kernels from escaping. You only have to tilt it for maybe 15 seconds total, and then you're done. Set it back down and let it finish. I usually only get four to six unpopped kernels per batch. Tip number three, Use tasty popcorn and season it lightly. Now, movie popcorn is just the opposite of this. They use cheap, low quality popcorn and then make it edible by adding large quantities of cheap, unhealthy flavored oils and salt. When you go light on the seasoning at home, the first thing you'll notice is that most supermarket brands of popcorn are pretty flavorless. I love my Orville Redenbacher's, but taste-wise, it's on the bland side too. 
So shop around online for some gourmet popping corn, maybe a variety pack to start. There's a really interesting variety out there. That may be a good topic for a future video, but back to seasoning. I prefer butter sprays to get great buttery flavor onto popcorn evenly and just adding the minimum amount of fat. Some are butter flavored, but you can also just get olive oil in a spray can or mixtures of real butter and other healthy oils like this ghee spray I found at Kroger. I've noticed that spray technology has gotten a lot better in the past couple of years, so you can use very short sprays and get good coverage. The other important ingredient, of course, is salt. I highly recommend using the most finely ground popcorn salt you can find, since it sticks to the popcorn best with only a minimum amount of oil. But regular salt is fine too, if that's your preference. Matter of fact, my super secret personal favorite is Lowry's Seasoned Salt. That's not for everybody though. In fact, my family has dubbed my season salt recipe as Dave's Poison Popcorn. There are a lot of other things you can use as toppings, but I like to keep it simple. So that's all you need to know about air popping. Maybe you have a favorite brand of popping corn you'd like to share? If so, leave it down in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this. Happy popping, everybody.